Chuck, what do you know about Medusa? Um, I don't want to see her. I know that. <laughs> if, she, if she ever said to me, uh, look here, I'm like, no. <laughs> not looking. <laughs> no, I'm not looking. What do you mean, look here? Uh. <laughs> yeah, she makes eye contact with you. You turn to stone. Right. And she's famously in the night sky. She's oh, immortalized. Did not, did not the know severed that. head of Medusa is immortalized, held by the Perseus. Perseus is a constellation in the sky. And there's a star called Algol, which is a variable star. It changes its brightness uh, over relatively short periods of time. That's why we call them variable stars. And the eye of the severed head is Algol. So this is Medusa, like, looking at you. It's, it's pretty fun. And, of course, Perseus was the hero in the story right. with Andromeda, who was the daughter of Cassiopeia. And she was, I don't remember why. Oh, Cassiopeia said she was more beautiful than the sea nymphs. And then, then out of punishment, they took her daughter and strapped her to the cliffs uh, for the sea monster to come devour her. Kraken. And Perseus... The, the Kraken, right. And so the Perseus comes to save to save her, but he can't get there on foot. So out of the sea foam rises up rises up uh, Pegasus. Pegasus. And he right. flies on the back of Pegasus. Oh, he has to slay Medusa, all right? Right. And so he does it by looking at her, but through the reflection of his shield. Right. Okay? And that way it's not a direct, direct sight line. I and can't believe she her. fell for that. And, so, you know, and, and backs up to her and slays her backwards, right? That was right. pretty cool. And it cuts off her head and puts it in a, in a, in a sack. Perseus is in the sky, um, rides on the back to go save Andromeda by showing the severed head of Medusa to the Kraken. And the Kraken turns to stone and then crumbles away because he's too big to be stone, right? As a, as a, that's, I got to say, that's a big chance that Perseus took that you know, the severed head would still be able to do its thing. Good, yeah, good, yeah. rather than just with closed eyelids, right? You have right. to, like, pry open the eyelids with toothpicks it, it, or something exactly. to make that Exactly, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's, uh, he had to make sure she died with her eyes open, probably from the surprise, <laughs> the surprise of falling for that stupid trick of looking at her through a shield. So she died with her eyes like, I can't believe that I fell for this. Like... <laughs> Is that what she sounds like? Is that that's, her voice? That's Medusa. I can't oh my believe. God. I can't believe I fell for this stupid trick. <laughs> okay. So all of them are in the night sky. We got Andromeda, Medusa, uh, Cassiopeia. Uh, the reason why I'm saying all this is there's a whole set of legends that derive from the expectation that when you look at someone or anything, that you're sending out some beam of energy or information or light as though seeing was an active aspect of what it is to obtain information. Right. right? So I see you because, because I'm going out there and I'm getting you right. and bringing you and back into my you head. And back in. Right. Right, that, right. So that is not how seeing works. And this was not established until about... 1300 years ago in the Middle East, in what we say, call the golden age of Islam, uh, Al Hazen, uh, uh, occasionally referred to as uh, Al Hazen, both of those I think are legitimate names for him, one of the great scientists of the era, early, an early scientist in the history of scientists, um, kept good notes, had hypotheses of how things worked. He looked at a cow eyeball, saw a lens, saw that you can make an image on the back of the eyeball, and he deduced that the act of sight is 100% passive. All reception. Passive. All reception. So you can't just give someone the Google eyes and have them say, oh, I feel someone's looking at me. People will still say that. Right. But all experiments show that, no, you cannot tell if you do it in a, in a controlled setting. You cannot tell when someone's looking at you. Okay? Unless you're in the in fact, subway. Because <laughs> sometimes you're in the subway and you just get that feeling that comes up the back of your neck. 
and you turn, and there is some creepy person <laughs> staring at you, and they don't turn okay. away. They will not. That's, like, that's how you know you're in New York. Any other place, you look at somebody and they look away like, oh, shoot, I was staring. They, they look sheepish about yeah, having, like, having I can't been believe caught. I was right. there. You, in New York, you turn at them and they're just like, that's right. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like, it's, it's <laughs> Don't scare people from the New York City subways. That's not what. Here's my point. Anytime you turn around because you think someone's staring at you right. and they are staring at you. Right. You have not recorded the thousands of times people were also staring at you right. and you didn't turn around to notice, right. okay? Right, so this, right. this is when you do the control setting, this, this is the case. So it's just an interesting fact. The Bible stories about, who was it that turned back and she became a pillar was, of salt? Uh, Lot's because, wife. Is it because she observed or because the- No, she- Because Sodom and she, Gomorrah, the light from Sodom and Gomorrah reached her eyes, which was it? Well, or am I mixing told, my Bible stories here? No, no, that was correct. It was, it was, it was actually both mm -hmm. of that, both those things. She observed the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and they were told, "Whatever you do, do not look back." And so she violated the the directive, looked back at the destruction, and turned to stone in doing so. Okay, so that case, that might not be her sending out a signal from her eyeballs. So that sounds like a more legit. Uh, consequence of this right. re relative to Medusa looking at you, right. her eyes light up and then you turn to stone. So, so I just, it's an interesting history how you can, there, there can be mythologies that rise up around physiological misconceptions that make for interesting stories, right? right. And people used to be thought of as dying of a broken heart, all right? Uh, maybe it was an actual heart attack. All right, but then you know there. It was bacon. It was attach. bacon. But Francis Bacon it, or no, bacon? No, it was just bacon. <laughs> the bacon they. <laughs> that's just like he died of that's a broken not... heart. No, no, that's you called too cholesterol. Much bacon. <laughs> that's called cholesterol. The man <laughs> had bacon with every single meal, and you know you can't do. But it. you can't. You don't want to take away the romance of dying of a broken heart. That's all. No. So it's just it's just fun. So I don't I don't object to misconceptions if you have no better explanation at the time, and it becomes part of a sort of our cultural sense of the world. I mean that's this is what um, this is the richness and the depth of history that we experience as a culture. Who knows see, what see, they'll be saying about? You know, here's here's the problem with that though. See, what? Someone of your particular acuity can say that, can say this is part of the wondrous romance the of life. Charming the, elements the of charming our past. charming elements of life that we're able, because you're a person who understands the scientific method, you're somebody who uh, uh, you know, believes in data and empiricism, you know, both, mm -hmm. okay? But the problem with that, that charming, that wonder, that, you know, these, these, these idiosyncratic, you know, things that happen, um, that we attribute meaning to them, you know that we're attributing that meaning. We are affixing meaning to those things. They don't really yeah. have meaning. The problem is there are a bunch of dumbasses who, <laughs> who actually believe Okay. They believe this. It, it's no. Okay. Long, there's no excuse. What, once we've learned how all this works, there's no excuse to continue to think it's true, and that's what you're talking about. The yes! people who are are delayed in their acceptance of objective realities, and yes. I, I'm with you there. But I'm not going to judge people from long ago on today's standards. Oh, okay. okay? All right. I'm going right. to say. Right. Okay. okay. No. No. We're, well, yep. You got me. Yeah. That's. That's. We I got to give it to you. Okay. There. They're. They're, they're perfectly okay. acceptable. They had no other information, so therefore, boom. I get it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It, yeah. Exactly. And you know, right on down to those who imagined that someone having an epileptic seizure were being invaded by the devil. Right. Right. And so you go get the priest, and they do the holy water. Right. And and then, then the they come out over. of these symptoms. Right. The seizure's it, over. The 20-minute seizure ends. It just ended because it, how far away is the church? 500 right. years ago. It's like right. two blocks away, right? Exactly. Just in time for the priest to get there. So I, it's, it's, we're trying to make sense of the world. And I, so I don't, you know, I'm, it's I'm okay It's so funny with that. you use that, that, that as an example because I think it's a great example because 
we can actually see the brain now. We can see the activity of the brain and exactly yeah. what is happening in the brain that causes yeah. this epileptic fit. So there is, we're not seeing the devil. What we're seeing is a neurosynaptic breakdown or malfunction. Right. And so, you know, but where did the devil go? You know, it, like, right, it, right, if, right. You, if you want to still believe so, that. Right, but if, fine. In the face of science, just don't lead any science agencies that allocate research funding. <laughs> play, for play a job for you <laughs> if it's in a society. All right, Chuck, we got to end it there. All right. All right this, <laughs> this has been a, yet another Star Talk explainer on some random subject you never thought you might be interested in. And maybe you're still not. I don't know. <laughs> Who might it tell? Neil deGrasse Tyson here, as always. Keep looking up. <laughs>